Good afternoon, or good evening, or good morning, depending on where in the world you are. I wanted to touch base as we get towards the end of a, a very, very bizarre year to wish everyone a happy Christmas and a happy new year and reflect on some of the things that have happened and what's going to happen in the future. Um, I would normally at this time of year be with my family at one or several of my resorts. Last year I was in Germany and in Bali. I saw many of you there. Year before, I think it was India. Um, it's been various places that I like to go to this time of year. This year, it's not possible because of restrictions on travel. I did manage to get out with the family just before the English lockdowns. Um, it was a bit like trying to get the last flight from Saigon, but um, I'm very pleased that we did get out. I feel a bit guilty being out talking to you because I know many of you are in pretty grim lockdown situations. And so I do slightly apologize if I'm sitting here in a, a more pleasant place and I do am sympathetic and empathetic to what you're going to and will of course be back there in the not too distant future. But we did get out for a family holiday and it does actually have uh, an added bonus uh, by being out for 14 days. It means that I can travel to some of our areas of operations again straight after this, which I couldn't have done if I was coming from England. So I, I'd hesitate to say it's a quarantine. It's probably one of the nicest quarantines in the world, but it does have an upside. And when I leave here, I'll be going hopefully to India um, to see my people there and to Dubai to meet some managers there and over to Bali and then hopefully get over to the Caribbean. As you know, I'm looking at some products over there, which I'd like to try and get. And also going to look at going down to uh, Brazil I think Brazil is somewhere that will be some very good additions to our portfolio. We've been offered some very nice resorts down there. I, I went there a number of years ago and uh, we almost acquired some assets. And whilst at the moment it might seem slightly strange because Brazil is obviously doing it pretty tough, I do believe that when this storm is over, Brazil will still be a destination that our owners want to go to and will be a good place for us to be. So after here, I'll use the chance of, of freedom from, from, from English restrictions to do a bit of traveling and go around and hopefully see some of my, some of my people. So what I wanted to do really um, was to say a lot of thanks in this, in this message to everyone. Um, it, it's been a year which none of us could have anticipated. It probably will be the worst year of our lives in many respects, or certainly the most unusual one. And we've all had to adapt. We've all had to change the way that we do things. And I firstly want to thank all the members of staff and my colleagues that may be listening to this. As many of them know, I did a, what we call a, a town hall speech a couple of weeks ago and gave that thanks. And, and it has been tremendous and humbling to see the, the work that people have done, the hours they put in, the acceptance or the inevitability of, of earning less money and the lack of complaint and the getting things done. So I'm extremely grateful for everyone in the Karma family that has done that. Um, as you know, we, we've had a very strong mandate to support everyone and we have quite a large number of staff that can't work because of the circumstances. I think it's about 500 or 600 people. And when I did my town hall, I reiterated that not only will we continue supporting all the people that can't work, but in fact, we're going to increase our support uh, quite substantially because I'm very conscious that, that times are tough. And I'm very conscious that times are tough uh, for many of you out there, whether it be um, there is no employment or whether it be tragically um, people you know or, or, or loved ones or close relatives have, have, have passed away or have had the illness. And so clearly, we want to do as much support as we can, and we will continue that through into the new year internally in, in our company. I also very much want to thank the owners. I know there's many of you that watch this um, each week or every few weeks when I do it. And it, it is it is not taken for granted, the, the, the loyalty that you've displayed to us as a company. I, I've said many times, I think we, we are in it together. Um, but as members, sometimes you couldn't take holidays or you couldn't go where you wanted to or there was other personal things which were difficult this year and maybe financial worries and challenges. But the level of support in so many ways um, has been tremendous. And it really reiterates to me that we are we are a family, um, whether you're someone that works with me or you're one of our clients or maybe you're a supplier or, or someone that we have some business interaction with. We are a family. We're a bit dysfunctional at times. I mean, show me a family that doesn't argue and get a bit pissed off with each other. Um, so nothing's perfect, but I think it's a real strong validation, not only of our product, which I'm very proud of, but what we are doing together to get through this very tough time. And as I've said, come out the other side, I think stronger than ever. And, and it might be stronger than ever in terms of the resorts. It might be stronger than ever in terms of the products. It might be little things like this communicating with, with you, which I thoroughly enjoy and I think will go on for ad infinitum for a long time. And it's forced on us various changes and it's forced on us various things that I think will 
better us going forward and will stay with us. So a sincere thanks to, to everyone listening. Um, it's, it is not taken for granted, and I'm humbled by the support in, in so many ways. Let me give you a quick overview of the resort, um, where we are. If we start in Australia, Rot Nest is doing gangbusters. I mean, those, those of you that are in uh, Perth, I think, are enjoying it and going there. And um, the golf course does well. As you know, we have a, a golf course there. And our spa is, is smashing the budget. Everyone is enjoying treatments. And the occupancy is virtually 100%. I think it's 100% for 11 days in a row now. The various food and beverage outlets are buzzing, so so that's good. And it really carries on what we've seen everywhere, that when we can open and people can get there, it's very much almost a roaring 20s mentality, I think, that, that people want to enjoy themselves because they are a bit sick of being locked down. They're worried when the next next lockdown may come. And so we are seeing um, very good use at Rottnest, which is very encouraging. Bali, as you know, is, is, is tough. Um, the only people that can get into Bali are, are locals, Indonesians, um, and we have many loyal Indonesian owners, but it's not easy for them. Um, there are restrictions and COVID tests required and not that many flights and, and quite expensive flights to be candid. Uh, recently, the government asked us not to really celebrate Christmas and New Year. So we've got to tone down our normal fantastic parties and, and events. And uh, they recently slapped some more bans on about foreign people coming uh, because of the new strain in, in, in England and, and, and elsewhere in the world. So, so Bali's been doing tough, but it is, it is resilient. And, and again, we're seeing that when our Indonesian friends and clients come, they're enjoying the resorts. The resorts are pretty full when they're able to be full. And we can see that continuing. And I'll talk in a moment about how I see the next few few months developing. Over in India, it's incredibly robust. I mean, India clearly has dealt with... Um, the coronavirus in its own inimitable way of, of having tremendous positiveness and continuing on. And so our resorts have been pretty full and our, our owners and our members and our clients are enjoying themselves and Christmas and New Year is pretty robust there. So India has um, been very, very resilient and I think have a fantastic sort of attitude towards this, which is just life must go on and we must continue. Europe, as I am sure you know, is is but locked down. Um, uh, all our resorts are shut in Europe. We have various tiers and various degrees of lockdown, but but everything is shut in Europe, and we anticipate that continuing for several months. And and the way I see the world is I see huge light at the end of the tunnel. I think that, you know, we've had a very tough nine months and things aren't going to get easy straight away. But the vaccines are obviously a gift from God. It's fantastic. And, and the fact there have been so many, I find it, without being a cynic, I find it quite strange there are so many all of a sudden. But whatever, I don't care. There are vaccines. They're being rolled out in England. They're being rolled out in Europe. And I've every confidence they'll be rolled out all over the world. I think the next three months is going to be pretty much game as normal because whilst the vaccines are coming out, restrictions will have to be in place. So areas which are restricted will continue to be that way. It may modify a bit. There may be a bit more sort of up and down um, uh, activity with restrictions, but we anticipate the first quarter to be, to be pretty tough. We think the second quarter is going to improve greatly as more and more people get vaccinated, as herd immunity begins to come in. And my hope is that by the summer, European summer, or, you know, July, August, there will be a large degree of herd immunity and that it won't certainly be back to the old normal, but there will be a new normal and there'll be a lot more freedom of travel and less social distancing. And that'll roll into the end of the year when we get to the end. And I'm very hopeful that there'll be very little restrictions on international travel. We'll see. I mean, we are constantly, all of us, surprised on a daily or weekly basis by the curveballs that come up, whether it be the northern beaches in Sydney, whether it be new strains in Canton, who knows what the universe will throw at us. But I do believe there's light and I do believe that everything's moving in the right direction. A couple of initiatives that may uh, please you. One which I'm quite excited about. We've been brainstorming this the last few weeks and we hope to launch it early in the new year. And I think it will appeal to many of our owners and members um, and it's in response to a certain extent of the question, what, what can we do to help someone that can't necessarily utilize their holiday entitlements or their holiday desires because of restrictions? We, we're taking a leaf out of Airbnb's book, to be honest, and we're going to start a new program, um, which will be a working title on the name, but a new program where we're designing computer software whereby owners can register their own accommodation, their own houses. It could be their own house. 
It could be a holiday home. It could be a caravan they have. It could be a boat, whatever it is, somewhere that people can stay. And we are going to create a, a essentially um, a, um, a portfolio of this property. And the owners can decide whether they want to be paid for it in cash or they want to be paid in points or holiday entitlement. And we're going to allow other owners to access that inventory. So in other words, if you were going to take a week's holiday at one of our resorts in Europe, you could maybe then rent a fellow owner's house in London for two nights. Or you could decide that you want to utilize your points on going on holiday in Queensland um, rather than going to Europe because you can't get to Europe. So I do think it's exciting and I think it'll enable people to utilize their points and ownership rights in different ways. It'll give inventory in cities, which is always a problem in our industry. It'll enable people to tack on several nights at the end of holidays or take alternative holidays. So we anticipate Anticipate launching this early in January. Uh, my IT people are pulling their hair out when I say I want it in the second week, and they say, "John, it doesn't quite work like that. We've got to twiddle a few more things around." But they're fantastic people, so they will. And we will be doing a test program where we're inviting you, our owners and clients, to help us finesse it. So I think that could be a very good program and could open up a lot of inventory um, for you to go to in places where you can't you can't now and hope each other. We're also launching a radio station, Karma Radio, uh, with one of our in-house DJs that we're going to have a, a weekly radio that uh, can play requests or celebrate birthdays or whatever. And we're going to enhance our, our direct owner communication in quite a few ways because I do think that it's worked very well, but there's more that we can do there. So that's what I see going forward. I, I you, you know me, many of you have spoken to me over the years and have got to know me through these these podcasts or these speeches, whatever they are. I am optimistic. I am glass half full. I think things have panned out better than we could have hoped for in many respects. I think there is a lot of light at the end of the tunnel. I don't say there's not going to be surprises, but I am positive we're moving in the right direction. And the thing I'm most thankful about is you, whether it be um, colleagues, members of staff, whether it be third-party companies that we work with, or it be our owners. And I think the most important thing is that we've, we've dealt with this together and we continue to deal with it together. So I apologize if I'm somewhere sunnier than you. Actually, half an hour ago, I was breathing a sigh of relief because it was raining and I thought at least I can be somewhere which is a bit <laughs> cloudy and raining. The bloody sun's come out now, but anyway, I guess that's not too bad. So to sign off on the year, I need to toast you, clearly, and we need to toast the end of what the Queen once called an Annus Horribilis. I think in this Annus Horribilis, we can mispronounce the first word quite comfortably. Toast the end of something which has been pretty grim um, and has been something that will go down in history. And toast the beginning of something which we all hope is going to be a lot better, uh, 2021. Although I must say, someone pointed out on one of those funnies that go around on the email, and I'm sure you will get them, that it was, of course, the year that Mad Max was based in. So <laughs> maybe we've got road warriors to look forward to. But assuming that doesn't happen, or maybe just in somewhere in the outback in Australia, we'll, we'll leave that to you guys. But if that doesn't happen, then I am hopeful of a much better year. If I was at home, I'd be pulling out something savage from the cellar to toast you with because this is obviously a special juncture of the year. I'm here at a resort, so I get a bit pissed off at the price they charge for good wine. I know, I know, you're saying to me, John, it's the same at your resort, I know. But with fairness, it is difficult because you're on an island and uh, we have the same problem. And often in Muslim countries, there's an alcohol tax and there's all sorts of taxes, which mean it has to be quite expensive. But I went for a more modest wine, if you'll excuse me. So I went for, for the last drink of the year with you, um, a Chianti Classico. Uh, as you know, we have a resort in Chianti, Borgo de Collioli. We make a Karma Chianti, which is a pretty good drop, and we're making a new one quite soon. And our new rosé is coming out quite soon, by the way. Uh, so if you're around in Europe, I shall try and get you some of that some of that brew. Chianti Classico, I love Chianti. To me, it's a very simple, good-priced wine. It talks of the sunshine. It talks of Italy. It's something about it which can only be... Chianti Classico. The major drape grape is Sangiovese, which is a very sort of tasty drape, and its alcohol level is not too shabby, uh, 13%, so it doesn't make you fall over in the sun. So I shall toast you one final time. Let's get bye-bye Anna Cerebalus, and welcome 2021, the year of Mad Max. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay hydrated, and most of all, thank you. Thank you very much.